Progress on the observatory continues to move along at a good pace, or at least it was doing so, until this past week I encountered, we'll call it a three-body problem. <laughs> Part of that was with my own body. One night while heading out to the observatory, I discovered a new hole and fell into it, so I injured my knee pretty badly and I couldn't work on the observatory for about a week. I should really wait about another week, I think, before I put pressure on that leg, but the weather has forced my hand, so I'm working on it again. The other two parts of the problem are two separate storms which will both drop record amounts of rain on us. Combined, those two storms could precipitate as much as 180 millimeters of rain. So ready or not, it has become necessary to move ahead on the construction of the observatory. Because I can't move around all that well yet, I'm lumping around on a crutch, I wasn't really able to manage cameras and get a lot of good videography this time. I took snapshots of the construction along the way. So with heavy rain and wind incoming, the first goal was to strengthen the observatory. Now I'd always intended to build this little structure solid as a rock, because during the winter it's not uncommon to get 90 km per hour gusts. I just wasn't ready to do that yet, but I have to go a lot faster now and get those walls shored up immediately. I also had to take one entire day and build one half of the roof frame. I decided to go with a split roof design. We'll talk about that more in the next episode, why I went with it and some of the technical solutions I've devised to work around problems with leakage down the middle of the roof. And because here in Nova Scotia we get so much wet snow during the winter, I anticipated problems with rails icing up and warping over the course of the winter. I really did not want to go with any external rail kind of design. And I think I've devised a way to make a split roof design work without rails, nor even with the external bars used to lift out and rotate away the roof halves in some designs. But for now, I had to build half the roofing frame to provide a support to hold up the tarps that will have to sit over the observatory to keep everything dry. Carpentry for the rest of the observatory can follow normal tolerance standards, but a split roof must be extremely precise, and I'm really allowing no more than a 32nd of an inch, and preferably less, of tolerance between the various cuts of wood. Thus, just making one side of the roof frame was a process that took all day. If I had a proper wood shop and a table saw, it would have gone much faster, but I'm building this with what I have in the field. Building the split roof begins by creating an inner frame that will sit on the outer portion of the observatory's walls. The inner frame is laid out around the entire observatory. The division is cut in half, and precision is really narrow here, so the cut has to account for even the narrow curve of the saw blade. And then an outer frame is attached to the inner frame. The outer frame will hang a couple inches over the walls to provide a drip edge. There will be only two trusses on the outside of each side of the split roof, and a center strut must be cut and shaped with the upper part to a 24 degree angle, and then rafters cut and shaped to fit that part, with vertical inner edges at a perfect 90 degrees to the plane of the ground, and the low ends carefully cut and shaped to fit perfectly to the broad rim or fascia of the roof. And that's a little extra complicated in the case of my design as I've bolted a 2x4 inner beam to a 2x6 outer beam to create extra strength and fill the space where the rafters and sheathing will come down over the roof. With this very important part of construction, I made no exceptions with timber quality. Each piece of wood had to be absolutely perfect with a tight grain and no signs of cracks. It took a full day to get that one half of the roof done to my satisfaction. But when it was done and every beam was properly bolted in place, we called it a day, and on day two, we went about the process of strengthening the structure itself. It's pretty well waterproof on the outside now, but it had to hold up against the storm winds that were coming. On day two, the process of reinforcing the walls began in earnest. Any struts where two plates of LP smart siding joined were doubled, and center struts were also doubled to provide additional bolting space to double bolt the walls to the frame. Outer sheathing, whether plywood, T111 or smart siding can provide a lot of lateral strength if it's properly bolted in. I also decided to double the thickness of the bottom plates, so I imprinted the positions of all the bolts that fastened down the walls to the deck itself, and then cut upper bottom plates and drilled out spaces to accommodate those bolts and fasten them down to the lower bottom plates. This allowed me to double screw the base of the LP siding to the bottom plates, greatly enhancing the strength of that attachment. And in a final step, I cross-bolted the end of each wall with thick 3-inch zinc-plated steel screws into the wall beside it, adding even more to the lateral strength of the walls. 
The lateral strength is their ability to resist the wind. There's not supposed to be a lot of wind coming with the storm. Like I said, 50 kilometer gusts, that's about 35 miles per hour. It's still strong, but not hurricane force. But as the final step to reinforcing those walls, on this weekend, I'll install some foam silverboard insulation, put vapor seal on the inside, and then fasten OSB inner walls to the walls. This is to slow down temperature changes and minimize condensation inside the observatory when the roof is shut, but the additional OSB fastened to the inner side of the walls should triple their lateral strength. And at that point, I can finally finish the second half of the roof frame and begin setting up the inner guides and attachments. Then I can build the door and finish the internal fittings, at which point this will be a fully functional observatory. All the strengthening of the structure, shoring up and battening down everything, left the observatory looking like not very much had been accomplished. Though of course when it was done, the entire structure was much, much stronger than it started. But it was after sundown, by the time the last of the work was done, that I looked up to see a reddening, ominous sky full of horsetail clouds, a sure sign that the inclement weather that had been predicted was on its way. There was only one last step to do. Fix down the one completed roof frame with 12 inch wood clamps, and then take a couple large leftover pieces of LP siding. Bolt some 2x4 scraps in place near the bottom to anchor them in place against the wall structure. And then my wife Daphne and I double wrapped the entire thing in reinforced tarps. By yesterday it was completed. And just in time, because today at the time of this recording, the weather looks like this, and it's only getting worse. It is expected we will get up to 90 millimeters of rain today alone, a result of hurricanes happening far away to the south. But I think the observatory is ready to ride it out. And when it's done, with nearly a week of good weather ahead, and if I'm healed up by that time, who knows, I just might be able to finish this project up.